Happy New Year, everyone. I just want to say thank you so much for making 2022 such a beautiful year for me. I had a lot of hard moments going through, but because of you all, I just kept pushing and I was given the motivation to continue on with doing the things that I like doing. So I just want to say thank you so much. I also hope that you and your family are having a beautiful new year. And if you aren't, just know that you have the entire year and more to get to a better place in your life. And there's no rush in doing what you want to do. So just take your time and relax and breathe and just know that better days are ahead. I thought it would be fun to start the year off with a little recap of everything I've ever crocheted from the moment I started to today. A lot of the pieces I've given to family and friends. For everything else, I'm gonna have a little clip on either side showing how the piece looks like on and just give you some more visuals. If you can tell, I got a mic for Christmas, so it's gonna be crisp audio from now on and hopefully I can give you crisp, high quality videos as soon as possible as well. So as you can see, there is a lot of things to go through. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I split everything into different categories and the first category that we're starting with is tops. The first top I'm gonna show is this colorful bralette. I think I did this for my spring crochet video. This was the first bralette I've ever made. On a lot of the tutorials I make, I record as I learn how to do it myself. So this was, this, this was pretty successful. Once you get the hang of making a bralette or basically once you make one bralette, you, you won't have any trouble making any for yourself ever again because it's basically just the same size every time so you don't have to really struggle with that. I made this black and white bralette with little frillies. I don't know how to, what to call them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be saying weird names for things so I apologize, but I made this one with little frillies at the bottom and this was 100% cotton. The other one was 100% acrylic. And this one's really good for like summertime, springtime, and it goes good with a lot of different outfits. This one here is another one I made with cotton. This one was more experimental than anything, but it still came out really cute and I like it. Here's another bralette. This one is really, really pretty to me. Um, this cotton is completely different from this cotton, but I like how airy this one is more. And I've been avoiding using cotton, because I don't like how it feels. Like with this one, I didn't. I don't like how rough it is, but I've been slowly learning that different cotton brands, some cotton brands are really soft. So this year I want to kind of experiment with the different types of cotton and hopefully I can use that more than acrylic. The last bralette I have to show is this leafy bralette, which I was supposed to make a matching skirt for, but I still haven't done it. Be mainly because like this yarn, I ran out of this specific color and I don't, I don't remember the brand and I didn't wanna get a color that's not the same exact color. So I just threw it to the back burner, but I'm gonna, one day I'm gonna make a matching skirt and I think it'll be super cute. This one was pretty popular and I was surprised because when I was designing this at first, I thought it was gonna look really ugly because of the frillies, but it works perfectly, especially when you match it with the leg warmers that I'll show later in the video. The next top I have is this diamond top that I made. Um, this one I haven't worn because unfortunately I tied it in the back wrong and then in order to get it off, the only way to get it off was for me to cut it and since then I just have to like remake it so it's just been sitting in the back of the closet. I don't know what yarn I used so and I, I thought this was really pretty and it goes well with my skin tone and it's unfortunate that I messed up this part but I feel like I might just add on a different yarn entirely to the corners so that I can just add it the way that I want to add it and then I don't have to remake the whole thing. But this one is the same exact top but in all purple and I actually have a tutorial on my uh, YouTube somewhere where I showed how to make this. I like, I like this one a lot better, but you know, it's okay. The next top I have is this shrug that I made. This was the first shrug that I've ever made. If you can tell, I still haven't weaved in this end. This is just so cute. I love how this turned out. 
uh, mainly because of the yarn that I used. But yeah, I don't remember how I made this. A lot of the things, I, I'm just really glad that I write down the patterns as I go because if I ever want to make this again, I have to look at my notes or re-watch the tutorial that I made because I'm very forgetful, unfortunately. But I loved how the sleeves came out. The blue is just so beautiful and I just love it. It's so cute. The last top I have to show is this little coquette top. I mentioned before, I didn't know if I should name it a coquette top, but we're just going to go along with it. Um, this was originally supposed to be a dress, but when I was working on the body part, I was kind of messing up a lot and the stitching just didn't look good to me. So I'm going to, one day I'm going to try with a different yarn where you can't see the stitches at all. And then I'm going to try and make it a dress the same way that I wanted to. But this came out super cute. It was very experimental, um, with the whole making a twist in the front and then attaching arms and then increasing at the arms and then adding a little bow in the back where you can tie it and everything. But I really like how it came out. It's very cute, very girly, and I love it. For some reason, I'm normally someone who wears like black or just comfortable clothing, but these days I've been really into girly colors like baby pink, baby blue, white, and just like more fitted clothes. I think I'm changing, <laughs> but I'm all for it because it's just so cute to me right now. That is all of the tops. Next, we're moving on to the sweaters. The first piece that we are starting with is this black and white checkered sweater vest that I made for my Wednesday video. This is the first ever knitted sweater vest that I've made. I've made officially two crochet sweater vests, but this is the first one I ever made. And I can visually see the mistakes I made. I don't like how the sleeves are at all, but that's because I decided to use a completely different stitch than anything else for some reason. And just the way that I cast it off. I need to learn the different ways to cast on and the different ways to cast off in knitting so that I don't have to be like, oh, I hate how this looks on the bottom or I hate how this looks when I cast off just so it can be exactly how I want it to be. Besides that, I'm getting better at color changes. Weaving in the little parts where I change the color, that is a bit of an issue that I need to work on because they stick out. I don't like how it sticks out, so I'm just going to continue to practice. But besides that, I love this sweater vest. For this being my first knitted sweater vest though, it's not bad. The next sweater vest I have is this crocheted sweater vest. I was playing around on Procreate and I just added these different colors together and I was like, this would be cool to make a sweater vest, but I have no clue how to make a sweater vest. So this was probably my most challenging project so far, just because like I didn't want to make a front and a back and then add it to the sides which I just should have done because it's 10 times easier. I wanted to make it like in the round kind of and figuring that out was complicated, but I did it. Yay. The next piece I have is the Wednesday Adams crochet sweater vest. Um, I made it way too big for me, um, but it's still really cute. I love the yarn that I chose to use and it's just, it's just, yeah, I, <laughs> It's really cozy to wear. I wore it out, I think, twice so far, and I love this. I'm, I, like, I'm, a lot of the pieces that I make, I'm really happy that I make them because it's just adding to my wardrobe without having to go shopping, even though it takes like 18 times longer to actually get to wear it because I have to actually make it. It's worth it, I think. And you cherish, you cherish your pieces a lot more if you actually make it, you know? All right, now to the actual sweaters. The first sweater I have here is my star sweater. This one was completely free-handed as well, and I just decided to record it as I go along for a tutorial. And it came out, thankfully, it came out good. I love how loose the sleeves are. I was pretty proud of how the star came out for this being, for me, not being that great at grid patterns. I've actually gotten better, and I'll show you another pattern that I recently worked on that I think was just the icing on the cake. Um, but this one I really like. Um, apparently, as you can see in this photo here, 
I think Romwe stole my design, but I'll uh, I'll let that you decide on whether or not you think that's true. Um, if it is, I I don't know what to do about it, um, or if I should do anything about it because they're known for that, them and Shein. So you know, it is what it is, I guess. It is actually the first knitted sweater that I've ever made also using mohair for the first time. This was also the first time I ever spent so much money on yarn. A bundle of this yarn was like $80 in total for I think four to five balls. So it was pretty expensive, but I love how this sweater came out. It's super cute. It is itchy, I'm not gonna lie, but I feel like if I just put something under it and like a long sleeve shirt or just like a little tank top, it'll be perfectly fine but it's super cute. I mean, I, I definitely want to work with mohair more, especially for different accessories and maybe like leg warmers. Um, but yeah, this next piece is my crochet Marceline sweater. It's actually pretty heavy because of the arms and because I used a chunky uh, yarn. I took this apart a few times in my video when I was making it and low key, I want to take it apart again because I've gotten better with doing grids and I feel like I can make this cat so much better. I just know I can this time, but just thinking about how I have to undo this entire neckline and the arms and oh my gosh, I might just make a new sweater in total. And this can be, this can be like the sweater that I wear in the house and then the new sweater can be one that I wear out the house. And then I kind of want to do a knitted version too because this is such a cute sweater and I just want to perfect the art of making the Marceline sweater. The last sweater that I have is Wari Gilmore's sweater that she wears in the first episode of Gilmore Girls. This took a long time for me. Um, I learned a lot of stitches during the process, like how to do this whole diamond in the middle and then how to do cable knit stitches. And so many of you beautiful souls told me that in between the cables and I think inside of the diamond, it's actually a reversed stockinette stitch. So the next time I want to make a cable knit sweater, like maybe the Taylor Swift cardigan, maybe, possibly, I don't know. I will know how to do it properly. The next category is cardigans. Yay! First cardigan that I'm going to show is actually my first ever knitted cardigan. This one here. At the yarn at first, I didn't like how it felt, but after a couple of days, I actually like it. I also want to point out that nothing here has been blocked and I'm going to one day take the time to just block everything and show the differences between the two. But for this cardigan, because this was my first, there's so many mistakes to the point where I think what I'm going to do is just take it apart, um, ball up the yarn and then make something else with the yarn because this is just it's a bit too small for me. I don't like the neckline or the button band, so I'm just gonna take it apart and change it into something else. Now I have my first ever crochet cardigan, my first ever crochet piece that I actually completed, and the one that started it all, this patchwork cardigan here. This is probably the worst feeling cardigan or piece throughout this entire video because I was a complete beginner. I used the cheapest yarn from Walmart. And so it, the feeling is not the best, but I am still gonna definitely wear it. It is very cozy. It is very warm. It's heavy. It's perfect for fall and winter time. And I, it has a place in my heart. The back of it came apart like a couple days after I did the initial video, but it took like two seconds to just stitch it back together. So it was no biggie. The next cardigan I have is this Tanjiro Haori that I made for my create recreation video. Um, it's from the anime Demon Slayer. I love this so much. I love this so, so much. I'm so glad I actually finished it because throughout last year, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna finish it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it guys, don't worry. And I just never touched it, but I finally decided to get it done and I'm so happy that I did. 
it's just perfect and who doesn't love Demon Slayer? The next cardigan I have is another patchwork cardigan that I did for my patchwork cardigan tutorial video. Um, I like this one because it's more fitted. I used a different yarn, so it's a lot softer and I love the colors. It's this one and then the fall patchwork cardigan. They are my two favorite colors clashing together. Like I really like dark colors, but I also really like cute, and uh, vibrant colors and sometimes I have a hard time choosing which ones I like and so you just make a bunch of different versions to fulfill yourself depending on the day. The next cardigan I have is this knitted cardigan here. I actually never showed this on camera at all or anything but I do actually wear this a lot and you can kind of see that it's kind of worn because of the the yarn is kind of getting all fuzzy and stuff like that, but it's a really soft cardigan. It was really fun to make. I thought it would be cool to do like a little uh, contrast in color. And yeah, I, I want to know how to make the yarn not do this. I'll show a close up later, but if anyone has any tips on that, on keeping your yarn from getting so fuzzy and looking kind of rough, uh, let me know. It's much appreciated. The next cardigan I have is my Howl coat. I made this for another recreation video. It's really heavy and I kind of feel like I should have made it more my size, but if I ever decide to go to an anime con and I just want to throw this over my shoulders, it is more accurate to the actual movie, so I am pretty happy with it. Um, I'm gonna be starting a lot of projects with the sewing machine and once I actually learn how to turn the sewing machine on I am going to insert the red fabric that I got for this so it can be even more accurate to the movie and when I do that I'm gonna post a picture on the community tab or just throw it into like a little vlog or something just so I can show you what it looks like. The last cardigan that I have is this fall knit cardigan that I made for my fall cardigan video. This was the last cardigan that I did in that video and I made it for me because I wanted something that matched my skin tone with different colors and that went for fall. So we got this beautiful girl right here. Um, I think I need to get better at making buttonholes for cardigans. And once I do that, all of the cardigans will be a lot better. The next category is bottoms. So it's gonna be pants and skirts. So the first thing we're gonna start with are these granny square pants that I made for my pants video. If you can see on the back, I didn't really weave in any of these. I just mainly like tucked it on the inside, but then the last time I wore it, they were coming out. So I was just like, all right, I'm not gonna wear them until I weave them in and then I just completely forgot about them. But besides that, these came out so good. I, these granny squares were the bane of my existence, but I am definitely going to make so many more granny square pants because they're super comfortable. They fit perfectly on my body, especially because I added the drawstring in between the waistband. And I just love the colors. It just came out beautifully. Like I, I really, really, truly do love this. The next piece I have is this little reversible skirt that I made where it's blue on one side and green on the other. Um, this was very experimental. I just wanted to really use this specific yarn for something. And I thought this was pretty cool how like I could just wear either side in the front if I wanted to. And I definitely want to make pants with this yarn because it's so fuzzy and you can't see the stitches. I think I can make some really, really cool pants. Another skirt that I made was this green skirt. I was experimenting and trying to get rid of um, some of the green yarn that I have because for some reason I have a lot of green yarn. I mean, it might be my favorite color or something, who knows. I like this skirt, it's cute, just a basic skirt to throw on, you know. This skirt is a 100% cotton skirt that I made 
This was also pretty experimental. I wanted to use cotton for once on the skirt. Um, this was originally gonna be long, but I used three balls of cotton for this and each cotton ball was probably like $4. And I was like, that is too pricey. So it's gonna be a mini skirt. I also added this little string that you can wrap around your thigh and each string has these little leaves on it to give it a little floral theme, which is cute. And yeah, I really like it. It's perfect for spring and summertime. This next skirt that I have is a granny square skirt. I thought this was really cute and this took less time to make than the pants, but granny squares are still the bane of my existence. It's like a love-hate relationship, honestly. I feel like I would have liked it more if I used better colors, but it's not that bad. This next piece is some shorts that I made for my spring crochet video. Um, it matches that bralette, the colorful bralette that I showed earlier. And these are super, super comfortable. I love how they turned out. And this was actually my first time making shorts. So yeah, I was pretty happy with them. They're really cute. This isn't really bottoms, but I didn't know what other category to put it in. So I just put it here. This is a Layla or Aisha's outfit from Winx Club that I did for one of the recreation videos. This was the first time that I did crochet and knit together and it was very experimental. I did a lot of sewing and just testing the waters with this one, but it came out super cute. It's definitely cosplay worthy or even just, like this could be for cosplay or it could just be a simply cute outfit to wear because I added it with my boots. Mwah, beautiful outfit, so cute. I kind of want to recreate all of the Wings Club outfits now because this one turned out so well and I've learned a lot from it. And I feel like next time I'm gonna actually block it so it doesn't curl. But yeah, just let me know if you want that kind of video. And the last piece I have for the bottoms is my first pair of pants that I've ever crocheted, which are these black sweatpants with this orange drawstring to match the fall cardigan that I made. Just like the fall cardigan, I don't really like the yarn that I used for this one because it is a cheap yarn and because I ran out of black yarn, I combined it with another black yarn that was even more hard. So we'll see what happens when I do block these. First time crocheting and I was still a huge, like I was like an absolute beginner. So I think I did a good job with these. Okay, so the next category I have are hats. I've made a lot of hats and some of them I've given away to friends and family. So I'm gonna have pictures somewhere in here of the ones that I made. Unfortunately, I only have a couple of them, but yeah. So the first hat I have is this Spider-Man themed cat hat. Um, it's really cute. I think this was like the second cat hat I've ever made. The first one was that one with the little poofs at the end for my hat video. I am a huge fan of Spider-Man, so I'm gonna have a lot more Spider-Man themed crochet things this year, most likely. This next hat is a two-toned color beanie that I made. Um, if you want me to be honest, I don't remember making this. I probably just did it with the other two-toned hat that I made for my hat video. Um, it's a hat, there's not much to say about it. It fits, it's cute, I like it. This hat, I did something a little bit different. Uh, so usually I just go straight with one specific type of stitch, but with this one, I did the last couple of stitches in single crochet so that when I put the hat on, it's not bulky at the top. And I really liked how this was, so I think I'm gonna start doing that from now on with my crochet hats. This is a little beanie that I made with magic circle in the round, and I think it's super cute. My brother wore this to death and he stole all of my other ones but besides that it's cute it's a little bit loose on my head but that just makes it easier for me to roll it up and wear it how i want to this next hat i wear all the freaking time is this knit beanie here it's really chunky it was made with leftover yarn from my fall knit cardigan and i just wear this all the time it's super soft and chunky 
and I love it. This last beanie that I have to show is just another knit beanie that I made with leftover yarn. My goal is to make a, like a knit beanie in every color and a crochet beanie in every color and maybe like the magic round ones in every color just so I can have an abundance of different hats to wear. The next category I have are bags. This first bag that I'm showing is a little pattern that I found online for free, which was how to make the little bell bag from Animal Crossing. Um, and I decided to start using it for my extra change that was lying around. I think it's super cute. It came out perfectly. And I also learned how to make a little crochet star. So that would be cute to throw into different patterns that I make in the future. And yeah. This next tote bag was actually the first tote bag I've ever made using Hey Hey Crochet's gingham pattern crochet tutorial on YouTube. Uh, it will be linked below. Um, this was super cute. It was very easy to make, especially for it being my first ever tote bag. Yeah, I really love this bag. I should have weaved in the ends a lot better for the handles, but besides that, it's really cute. This next tote bag was me experimenting on making a little small tote bag with extra yarn that I just needed to get away as fast as possible. It's pretty basic. It's a bit too small, so I think I'm going to take it apart and use this yarn for something else, but but, you know, it gave me some practice. This next bag I made is one that is also in the round with magic circle. I really love it. It's like a cute little market bag. I made a tutorial for this, but I feel like the handles could have been better. But besides that, it's a cute bag. Very simple, very easy to make. This next tote bag that I made was actually the first time I ever used a grid pattern. So you can see why it looks super bad. And I actually really liked this grid that I found on Pinterest. And I think that what I'm gonna do is remake it in maybe the same colors, maybe a different color, cause you can kind of barely see that they're cats on it. And the type of yarn I use is a bit rough, which is good for tote bags, but I just wanna redo it because I just know it can be better. This tote bag is the first one that I ever lined with fabric. I had some extra fabric lying around and I wanted to see if I could, you know, line a bag. And so I did it with this one and I really truly love this bag. The only thing is that if you put like a lot of heavy stuff in it, the handle, it feels like it's gonna break. So I wanna figure out how to make it so the handles are strong enough to handle whatever you put in the bag. But besides that, I think it's super cute and I love it. The next couple of bags are all granny square bags. I was playing around and making items for my shop that I previously had, um, but like I said about the previous bag, I was scared that none of them were gonna be able to hold anything without breaking, so I just didn't sell them because I'd rather not sell it than sell it and people be mad that their bag doesn't work. So I have a granny square bag that is purple and cream colored here. I really love the little color scheme going on. I have this one that is a beige, green, and gray color scheme. And then I have this black and lavender color scheme. And all of them are actually made with 100% cotton, which I really like. I think cotton is the best way to go when it comes to making bags that will actually last. But like I said, I just need to figure out how to make them be able to hold anything that's over like three pounds. And then I made this one with 100% acrylic, which I showed in a tutorial somewhere. I can't remember, but it's somewhere on my channel. And then I also made this tote bag with lavender yarn, lavender yarn with velvet yarn. Um, this is really cute. I love how soft and fluffy it is, but it doesn't have the same issue with the handles, but it still does feel like it can break a little bit, but not as intensely as the other ones. This bag, which is ginormous, <laughs> I made this for actually one of the giveaway winners, but they haven't really replied to me yet. So I'm just hanging on to it and hopefully they can respond so that I can give them their bag. The last bag that I made and the one I think I'm most proud of is this No Face bag. 
it's kind of like a messenger bag a little bit um, I didn't add any cover to it like I wanted to but I'll probably do that a little bit later but I think this was really cute this is the first time where I felt absolutely proud of the grid in the graph coming out accurately and yeah I didn't know what colors I wanted to use on the sides. It was originally going to be black and then maybe black and white and then maybe black and purple. But I decided in the end to just use all three colors that I used in the graph. And I think it came out really cute. And as you can see, I did um, intarsia, like an intarsia method that came out really well. I'm going to have a video on how to do graphs very, very soon, I promise. The next category is just miscellaneous type of things because I didn't want to like make a whole bunch of different categories when it's just going to be like one piece in each. So it's just going to be a bunch of random things. First piece is actually unfinished, but it's this blanket here. Um, I started doing like two rows a day for this blanket, but then I ran out of yarn. So I am going to have to buy some more yarn to finish it. But I'm definitely am going to finish it because it's just so cute and warm. I also made that Euphoria blanket, but I gave it to my mom. This is very similar to a blanket that Zendaya uses in No Way Home in this photo here and I kind of want to remake that very soon. Um, I made this, this was the first ever knitted piece that I ever made, this Hufflepuff scarf that I made in 2020. Um, I think it's really bad and I would love to redo it, but I don't want to give it away or take it apart because I might, I might take it apart to redo it, but this was just the first thing I ever knitted so I'm pretty happy about it. This scarf here, I recently did a couple weeks ago. It's just a basic stockinette scarf that I threw, threw in the wash because I was out eating with my boyfriend and his friends and I accidentally dropped it and there was food and juice on the ground and that was gross. So I got scared throwing it in the wash, but it actually made it so much softer, which gave me the idea of like, man, I really need to block my items so that they can be as soft as this, as this scarf but it's really cute, it was very easy to make, and yeah. I made two little peppermint coasters using a tutorial on YouTube for Christmas. Uh, I don't know where the second one is, so I only have one to show, but it was so simple to make, and it's so cute. I'm trying to rush because my phone's about to die, so yeah. I made this little pumpkin here for my fall crochet video. This was actually the first pumpkin that I ever made and I was pretty happy about it. I made these cute Coraline fingerless gloves. I really wanted them to be f to have fingers, but it was complicated as you can tell if you watched the video. Um, maybe one day when I get a whole bunch of needles and actually learn how to knit gloves with like double-sided needles, I can make better ones, but these will do. I made the, I, I, I have a lot of these, um, but I made these cute little leaf inspired leg warmers. They got really popular on Pinterest, which I was surprised about because like I said about the bralette, I was scared that these were actually gonna be really ugly, but they came out pretty nice. And I made a couple of them to sell, but I just never got to selling them. So let me know if you want one, I guess. They're just sitting here, but yeah, my first ever pair of knit leg warmers I made for my Wednesday Adams video, which was the uh, leg warmers that Enid wears in, I think, one episode, one or two episodes. And they're super cute, super warm. I love them. And this is kind of a spoiler for one of the next videos coming out, but I love making leg warmers. And that is all the pieces that I've ever knitted and crocheted. Um, there are pieces that I missed here and there, mainly because I gave them as gifts and didn't really take photos of them, but I'm gonna have a quick section after my talking bit to show you the different photos of everything that I've made. But I hope this video has inspired you in some way. Um, I am surprised that I made so much looking at everything piled up and I just can't wait to make so much more this year. I have so many ideas that I wanna show you with you guys and um, 
yeah thank you so so much for watching i can't wait to see you in all the new videos this year like i said before i hope you're having a good year and if you're not just know that better days are bound to come thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye